Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a look at what we call the period of a sine or a cosine function. Remember what the period is. It's the horizontal distance for one complete cycle of the sine wave. Where we start at a certain value and we go all the way around the unit circle, we get back to the next point. So what that represents then is the number of total oscillations. In terms of physics, if you think of this as a wave because a sine or a cosine function in the real world can represent a wave and a wave is a complete cycle like this. So it's the number of waves or what I like to call here in, in trigonometry, the number of sine or cosine sections per 2 pi on the horizontal axis. So 2 pi would be the angular distance in radians. So how many times does a sine function go up and down like that in a 2 pi section on the horizontal axis. And that depends on the k. k in the real world is called the wave number, which again represents a number of complete oscillations. But in trigonometry, it's a number that we use to figure out the period. And the period would be the distance that, it, that the sine function or cosine function takes to make a complete, um, what we call 360 degree travel around the unit circle. So the period can be defined as 2 pi divided by k, and of course if k is equal to 1, then the period is 2 pi, and of course that would come when we have an equation that says y is equal to the sine of theta, so therefore k times theta, k would be 1, and so you'd, you'd get the normal sine function or cosine function that you would get when k is equal to 1, that you're familiar with. But what if k is equal to 2, or k is equal to 3, or k is equal to 1 half? What happens? So let's see what happens here. So we're ignoring everything else. Uh, we have the amplitude. We'll just call the amplitude A. We're ignoring the what we call the shift to the left to the right. We're ignoring the shift up or down. We'll just call all those zeros. And we've, turned, we've taken this equation and taken B to be 0, C to be 0. So we can call the equation this. Y is equal to A times the sine of K theta. And we're going to see how the sine function changes with different values for K. So we know that the sine function normally starts at 0, reaches a maximum, goes to 0 at pi, reaches a minimum, and goes to 0 at 2 pi. So the normal function like that would look the normal function would look like this. We have the net maximum amplitude A. The minimum amplitude would therefore be minus A. And so that's what a normal function would look like with k is equal to 1. But when k is equal to 2, what happens is you have more of these sections in a 2 pi region. That means the oscillations will be twice as as, uh, as fast, ah, fast would not be a good word, it would occur twice as often, that would maybe be a better word. So in that case we have the function look more like this. It goes to a maximum, goes back to zero, to a minimum, and back to here. So this whole oscillation portion, or the whole what we call uh, section on the horizontal axis, happens twice as fast, or happens in half the distance. And so we can then draw a second one, Oop, not quite right, so here would be the second one down, up, down, back here. So you see when k is equal to 2, we have two complete sections in a 2 pi period. If k is equal to 3, then you have three little sections, so that happens this way. So you have a first one, down, back up, back down, and then back up, back down, and back up like that. So now you can see that you have one section, two sections, three complete sections in a 2 pi distance on the horizontal axis. So that, what, that is what k represents. So the bigger number k, the faster the oscillations come, or the more you can fit on a single horizontal uh, distance of 2 pi like that going around the unit circle. On the other hand, when k becomes less than 1, that means you go have fewer of these cycles or less of these cycles. And so in this case, what you would get, you get something like this. It, uh, instead of having a complete cycle, in a 2 pi period, you'd have a half a cycle, so it would look like this. And then we'd keep going like that, and come back up here, and if the axis continued, you'd have a complete cycle in 4 pi distance on the horizontal axis instead of a 2 pi distance. So you can compare this is a normal, um, what we call wave or normal sine or cosine function when k is equal to 1. Here, when k is equal to 1 half, it requires twice the distance on the horizontal axis to have one complete section of the sine wave or the cosine waves. So hopefully this helps you understand what the k represents. I like to call it the periodicity factor or in physics we call it the wave number 
where the sine or cosine function actually represents a wave and k represents the number of oscillations you have per 2 pi distance on the horizontal axis. So that's the second part of defining the general equation for a sine or cosine function. So in the last, on the last video we saw what the amplitude did, here we see what the periodicity factor does, or with other words, how we determine the period of a particular sine or cosine function by simply taking 2 pi divided by k, and that's the number of periods, as you can call them, that you have on a 2 pi section of the graph. There you go, that's how we do that.